Hi, this is part four of Introduction to DMX Lighting. Uh, this one is going to talk about cabling and addressing. Uh, the connector used by the E1.11 standard is 5-pin XLR. Right? So we're going to use 5-pins XLR. Um, the actual standard prohibits the use of 3-pin uh, XLR due to the danger of damaging audio 3-pin XLR equipment. So basically, they don't want you to mix up the, uh, the lighting DMX lighting with the audio. Uh, personally, I don't think it's going to damage the equipment. Now, this is a, a five pin is used for what we call professional uh, DMX. Pin one of the uh, uh, connector is used for ground or shield. Pin two is used for data negative and pin three for data positive. Four and five are not used. Three pin XLR connectors are used by many manufacturers basically because uh, three pin audio ca cables are inexpensive, right? You can get them anywhere readily available. Five pin is actually hard to find. On a three pin, what happens is pin one is your ground and shield. Pin two is your data negative. Pin three is a positive. Pretty much similar to uh, the five pin. Um, a male connector has pins. So it's a male connector with pins and a female connector has sockets on it. You can easily make a 5-pin to 3-pin DMX adapter. Um, here's the wiring diagram. We have a 5-pin uh, XLR on this side and a 3-pin on this one. The only gotcha that you want to watch out for is that on a 5-pin, it's in sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, going counterclockwise. But on a 3-pin, it goes 1, 2, 3. You can see that it's not really in sequence. Uh, what's nice with the XLR connectors is that on the connectors, they will have marked what the pin numbers are. So you can barely see this. This is pin 1, and then it's marked pin 3 and pin 2. So 1, 2, 3. Uh, the same on this one. This is harder to see. Um, on the original image, it was easier to see 1, 2, and 3. So that's the only gotcha. Make sure you uh, are connecting the right pins to the right connector. A cable. A DMX cable versus XLR. The standard for a DMX is a have a characteristic impedance of 120 ohms. It's shielded with two conductors. So here's an example of a shielded cable is you have your rubber protective uh, jacket, then you have a shield, then you have a, a foil shield. So this is a braided shield, foil shield, and then you have your actual conductor here. And then you have your two signals, data minus data positive on it. Um, XLR cable, which is a very is audio cable, is used for microphones and line level signals. Um, it ha it's very similar. It looks exactly the same, except it has a characteristic impedance of 75 ohms. And that depends on where you read the uh, uh, reference source. So basically, I've seen it listed as 45 ohms, and I've also seen it 75 ohms. Or in that range, I'll say 45 to 75 ohms. I talked to the residents... Um, uh, audio expert here, and the first thing he said was 75 ohms, and I would go with that. Uh, if you use an XLR audio cable for uh, a DMX, the impedance may only become an issue on a long cable run. So we're talking, you know, uh, 300 meters or, or something ridiculously long like that. And you might see flaky behavior caused by line reflections. It's an impedance mismatch. So you might see uh, um, all of a sudden uh, the lights are kind of locking up or, or something like that that's going on. Uh, cable limitations, the specification lists 4,000 feet or roughly 1,200 meters as the maximum distance for the universe. Uh, most manufacturers recommend 1,000 feet or 300 meters. A uh, maximum of 300 feet or 100 meters between fixtures also. Uh, limitations are 32 fixtures in a cable run or in a universe. Right. If you need more fixtures, then what you have is multiple universes and cable runs. A uh, last device should be terminated. Uh, this will stop signal reflections. So that way uh, you don't want the signal going to the very last device and then bouncing back and interfering with other signals coming in. Uh, to make a termination, all you do is you put 120 ohm resistor between pins two and three. Uh, there's a color code for 120 ohm resistor, brown, red, brown. And then you can put it just inside a connector like this, or you can buy uh, terminations always made, already made. Uh, fixtures are daisy chains, so what you have is the controller will connect up to the DMX in, and then the out would go to the next uh, fixture device, and it would go into the in of the next device. So what we're going to do is take a look at uh, what type of cabling we have in the back of this LC4-2412. That's our DMX controller. So, I'll just pull this out, and 
me take a look and it's got a five pin so that's a five pin connector and it goes up runs up here comes all over here comes to here and I've already pulled this one out and let's see if we'll focus mostly it's my eyes are, yeah it's a five pin also so this is a professional uh, device up here and so it would go on the input right, DMX in and then we have this cable that's DMX out it's a five pin also and it comes across our wiring tray over up to here and if we look in the back of this one I've, it's a little bit tight to get out and what we'll see is that this one is a three pin so we have a five pin to three pin adapter so let's see if I can pop this in a little bit tricky there we go now this one here is our DMX out and it comes over and goes to the DMX in on this one DMX out goes to DMX in on this one all of these from here on are just three pin they're inexpensive uh, uh, DMX lighting that I picked up just to uh, put together uh, one of the things I, I wanted to mention while we're up here is that this light is properly mounted it's got a, a nice cable mount up there and it's also got a safety strap right so whenever you put lighting up you should have a safety strap and over here I'm missing the safety strap so what I've done is I've called for, uh, put a line into tech support I work at a post-secondary institute and we're gonna have safety straps put on this alrighty now one of the things that I wanted to mention is the very last device in this which is this uh, moving head lamp over here this one should be terminated uh, I did run into a problem as I mentioned before I bought inexpensive lights these little pars are like 15 bucks delivered out of Hong Kong uh, as soon as I put a termination in these four lights stopped working they wouldn't work on the DMX so right now just because it's an inexpensive system I don't run a uh, a termination on the end of this line also if any one of these connections are disconnected everything past it will not work so which makes sense your daisy chain so if this line I pulled out one of the XLR or was a bad XLR connector or cable then these lights wouldn't work so just to be aware of that base addresses each fixture has a base address this is the starting address for its functions and we can set them e using a digital display like an LED or LCD display like this one or a rotary display where you can actually uh, take a little screwdriver screw um, turn it in uh, the numbers would be from addressing 1 to 255 I think is the last one it'll, it'll accept and over here you can have a dip switch so you can set your dip switch for its address and the dip switch would be setting a binary number and each switch has a weighting and this one lists the weighting right underneath it uh, so you have your cabling set up everything's all hardwired and then what you do is you go to each fixture fixture and you set the DMX address the base address for each one uh, what we've done in part three a DMX lighting planning video is we came up with a DMX address table and it, by creating the table we create the base address so for my ICANN RBX 5 light uh, the base address is 1 uh, for my moving head uh, 12 lead uh, moving head fixture the base address was 3 so these are the numbers that we would put into the uh, uh, as the base address on the device and configure it so to set the uh, base address um, you'd come up and this one is a uh, pretty unique on the iCam let's see if I can focus right and it uh, has a L LCD display um, you would actually turn this knob here to change it right now it's on DMX address channel 1 um, and that's basically what we have as per our uh, uh, planning that we did originally we say this is going to be uh, channel 1 now over here the next one which is this moving light over here this one should be address 3 so what I'm going to do is just come off the ladder and then I'll magically pop over there all right, so I moved the ladder over here, and uh, this is more typical of a uh, uh, DMX fixture. It has a LED display, and uh, this one's upside down. So uh, 
this is the menu button so I click menu and what we see is it says ADDR it's upside down that stands for address so if I hit enter it'll say it's address 3 right? so this fixture is mounted uh, to the ceiling it's upside down so this is I just hit enter and now we're back and you might have noticed that this thing uh, moves around when you're doing it if there is no controller on this thing goes into a demo mode and usually it shines the uh, lights right in your eyes as you move around alrighty so this completes uh, part four cabling and addressing for DMX lighting uh, in part five what we're going to do is configure a DMX controller to communicate with fixtures and what we call that is patching